as interesting thing. You know, we come together. So uh, somebody called me uh, on Friday and they said, Rav, I want to ask you a question. Could I have a petur that I don't have to fast? Not to fast on Tisha B'Av. So I said, well, uh, what's the deal? Why will you want a petur? So he says, because they tell you the truth, I'm uh, very nervous. I got a big business deal going on Monday, and I'm not sure that I'm going to have the, the patience to fast. So I said, uh, listen, I tell you the truth. I could think of a lot of heterim. I could think of a lot of dispensations. That, unfortunately, is not one of them. I cannot give you a heter not to fast, but why are you nervous? You know what the great Rabbi Moshe of Kubrin said? There are two days. Two days that even if it wasn't a fast, I would still fast. Two days. What are those two days? Kippur. Yom Kippur. Even if it wasn't a fast, I would still fast. Why? Who has time to eat? Kippur. I got to do my avodah. I got to do all the things that I need the whole day. Tisha B'Av. Who could eat? Who could eat on such a day? No tam, no appetite. Tonight maybe, but now not. So I told this guy, and I said, listen, come together with me. We'll pray together on Tisha B'Av, and you'll see that it's not so simple. The guy came. He stayed together with me until 2 o'clock. Today, early in the morning, he was there from 7.30 till 2 o'clock. When I was leaving, he says, I want to ask the Rav Mechila. I want to ask forgiveness. I said, why do you need forgiveness? So he says, because I ask you for a pitur, I ask you to be exempt from fasting. And now I see what Tisha B'Av is all about. I have big regret that I asked for a pitur to get out of this. So we are joined in together in one of the greatest days on earth. It's a day that Hashem Yitbarach says, do it correctly. Think about the Beit HaMikdash. Confess what we did. Come closer to Hashem. You will have whatever you need for the entire year. When we sit together, Rabbi Kol Yaakov, when we are sitting together, and we are all joined in, in the whole idea of Teshuvah, of learning, there is nothing bigger. Borei Olam, Hashem sits in Shamayim. And he says, look at these people. Look at these men. Look at the boys. Look at the ladies. Look at the girls. There isn't anything better in this entire world. Hashem says, you're a nation that chaps the matzav. You get it. You understand. You come together. You are mitavel. You feel bad over the Beit HaMikdash. You sit a whole day in Chazak and listen in. There's nothing bigger than that. Let me just say, it's a very important thing on Tisha B'Av that we're careful. We always want to be careful. We want to be careful. Somebody told me they went to the store and they bought a product that they thought was kasher. They thought it was kosher. And it was almost the exact same product as one that really is kosher. And they brought it home and they're just, uh, what shall I say, about to sit down to the dinner and then all of a sudden, somebody says, wait a minute. This is not kasher. Where you bought this at? How you have it here? The person, I cannot tell you, they're shaking. They cooked it already in the oven. They made it in the pan. They used the silverware. It was muhana muzuman. It was all ready for the meal. At the last moment, they were saved. They were saved from a misur. They were saved from a prohibition. The person said, what do I do? I feel horrible. I said, why? Hashem saved you. Hashem saved you at the last moment. Why should you feel bad? But truthfully, I thought to myself, the whole Tisha B'Av started because of a mistake. It wasn't that it was on purpose. It wasn't amazing. We're not that way at all. You tell me a Jew goes and does something on purpose. No way on earth. A Jew so, does something, they can't hold themselves back. They couldn't resist something. It was too much for them. It was too difficult. 
they didn't have the right influences but they didn't go and do the wrong thing because they wanted to deep inside that heart of every Jew is Torah is Hashem is the will to do good it's an amazing thing the great Rabbi Israel of Stratton had a special Sefer Torah that Torah was so beautiful so mehudar I cannot tell you that everybody everybody in the world knew about it when he was Niftar when he died the great Uri of Stralisk came to his son and he said to his son could you tell me where is the Torah of your father in that moment he stood up he tore open his shirt he said give a look deep inside my heart that's where you find the Torah of my father and the truth is that the Torah is deep inside of each and every one of us there is nobody that does not have a neshama gavoa, a high soul that Hashem breathed in to all of us so let's go back for a moment it came the time that unfortunately Klal Yisrael we messed up a little bit Hashem waited three and one half years after the walls were surrounded Yerushalayim Yerushalayim Rakodesh was surrounded three and one half years they were surrounded they couldn't come in they couldn't break through Hashem waited why three and a half years maybe we're going to do tshuva maybe we're going to repent maybe I'm going to come closer to Hashem maybe I'm going to be more careful on Shabbat maybe I'm going to be more careful how I talk about the next person my good friend I can only say nice things I cannot say something bad I cannot say something that is negative I don't want to tell a story I was walking past his house on Tisha B'Av and I see him eating a piece of pizza and no sapersipurim no stories why? Because I know that there are halachot, many laws about what I'm allowed to say and what I can't say. So I want to be careful in it. But they weren't careful. And unfortunately, Hashem gave them a warning. Forty years before the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, forty years Hashem gave them warning. What happened? There was the Goral, if you remember, the lot. One was for Azazel and one was for... Lashem and the Kohen used to take it and all the time the one for Hashem where the goat would go for Hashem that would always come up in the right hand that was a great siman but 40 years before Chorban Beit HaMikdash it no longer came up in the right it came up in the left another thing that happened near Ma'aravi the light stayed lit until the next day it never went out near Tamid that candle now candle went out miracles of Beit HaMikdash of the temple began to go down and down and down next one the doors open the doors the gates of the Beit HaMikdash and the great Rebbe said why are you embarrassing yourself why the doors open no longer that great nace no longer that great miracle why Hashem said please I want you to do teshuvah. I am giving you enough simanim. When a person is on their way and they want to do something good, Hashem helps them out. If they get a siman and they get a flat tire and they're not on the way to do something good, wake up. It's a wake up call. Hashem just said, you know the reason you got a flat tire? (laughs) Think about it. Duh. That's the reason. Reason is, is that you have to connect it and understand. We get simanim from Hashem. The greatest siman was when all of these things stopped happening. But unfortunately, we did not take any simon from it. We did not take any direction. And so finally, Hashem was waiting on Har HaTzofim, waiting, waiting for the Teshuvah so that the Beit HaMikdash could be saved. After three and a half years, it didn't happen. Hashem said, sorry, I can't wait anymore. At that moment, Hashem said to the two Malachim, two angels, Gavriel 
Michael. Malachim, angels, I'm giving you the choice. You have to always be careful. Whatever you say, wherever you go, whatever choice you use, what you decide to do, what you decide not to do. A person has to be extremely careful because Hashem gave us Bechira. We have the free choice. We can do anything we want at any given moment. So what happened? Hashem said to the Malachim, what do you want? Do you want to save Klau Yisrael or do you want to save Beit HaMikdash? Choose one. Malachim, what would you choose? Immediately, any of us, we would say, please, save Klau Yisrael. Take the Beit HaMikdash. Hashem said, you chose wrong. You chose wrong. You take the fire. You Malachim. You take the torch. You be the first one to go down and light up the Beit HaMikdash. You be the one. Why? Because there's a simple idea here. Hashem promises Klau Yisrael that the Jewish people will be on forever and ever and ever. We will never be destroyed. Until the end of days, the Jewish people will be here. Am Yisrael is Netzach. We are here forever. Unfortunately, the Malachim said, no, take the Beit HaMikdash. If Klau Yisrael would have said at that moment, the Malachim would have said, take Klau Yisrael, we would have not been destroyed. The Beit HaMikdash would have been ours and it would have never been destroyed. However, they mixed up. On that, the Midrash says, Ashrei Adam Mefached Tamid. Happy is a person that they're always worried. I'm worried. I don't want to make the wrong choice. I don't want to make the wrong possibility when I have a chance to do a mitzvah. I want to make sure that I do the right choice. I want to make sure that when I have a chance to do an avera, a sin, I don't make the wrong choice. Hashem, help me that I don't sin. Hashem, help me that I don't do the wrong thing. Ashrei Adam Mefached Tamid. Always that we should be afraid that Chas Shalom will do the wrong thing. If I'm always afraid, so then I'm going to be careful only to do the thing that is right. I once had in the Soviet Union, they asked me to check before I left. And it was a time when, just a teenager at that time, and I checked shotness, you know, check inside to make sure there's not wool and linen in the same baguette. So I went and I took my little kit. I learned by the great Rabbi Rosenberger, Zechet Tzadik Livracha, how to check the shotness. And I took my kit, I took it to the Soviet Union. And I didn't know, they couldn't tell me who needed it to be checked. They didn't say anything, it was all secret in that time. Every day I carried it, I had it in my pocket. I had it in different pockets. I didn't know who it was. All of a sudden, one day, I'm davening in the middle of tefillah. A guy comes in and says, Matul Shochet wants to see you. I went in. He closed the door. He locked it behind me. He went up on the top. He crawls up, brings down a box, takes out a suit takes out a suit he said they said that you know how to check for shatnez could you check I said of course I begin to check the coat he's leaning over me completely I never had anybody lean over me while I checked the coat I said it's good then I took a look at another place he's leaning over me like this I opened it up. I said, it's good. I took a look in the threads. He's leaning again. I said, it's good. When I told him the begot is kasher, you can wear the coat. He picked me up, short man, picked me up and started to dance with me around the table. Someone wants to dance, you dance with him. That was it. I left. Did I understand why he's looking over like this? 
Did I understand why this was something special he's dancing about? No. Until later that day, someone was waiting for me outside. He said, you have no idea what you did for that Rabbi Motel. You have no idea. Three years, he wore an old suit that is already tearing all over. Chas Shalom. He would not wear the suit until he knew with certainty that it was kasher. Ashrei adam efached tamid. Happy is a person that's afraid. I don't want to wear something that's not right. I don't want to wear something that's a safek in any way, any doubt, anything whatsoever. I want to know that it's mahadrin min mahadrin. That when I wear something, it's a right thing. I want to know that when I say something and I say some words, it's going to be the proper way. I want to know that when I have a inkling to do something, it's the correct inkling, that it's coming from the right place. It's coming from Yetzer He's telling me the right thing to do. It's unbelievable. The great Sadikim in Noshim Tzadkaniyot, how careful they were before they did anything in this world. How they checked every single thing. How they were careful, no matter what happened. Always. Very interesting. We cry at night. So it's an interesting thing. Before Shim say that the truth is we should have cried before. We should have cried before Chorban Beit HaMikdash. When we saw what was going on, when we saw that they weren't keeping the Shabbat properly, when we saw that they weren't being careful ben adam between man and man, that they weren't treating each other with a proper respect, we should have cried. We should have cried. All the things when it said that they didn't make the Berchat Torah, when they didn't say the blessing over the Torah, we should have cried. Did they learn? Yeah, they learned. But did they say the bracha? No, they didn't. So there we see that there were several things that had happened that we should have cried about. We should have cried about the Beryonim that did not want to listen to that Torah. They didn't want to listen to the Chachamim. Chachamim said, stay, don't move, don't do anything. Beryonim said, no, no, Chachamim, they don't know, we know. Let's start up, we're fighting, let's destroy the food. They caused the downfall of the Beit HaMikdash because they didn't listen. They should have cried, but they didn't cry. So finally, what happened right after that? Immediately, immediately, Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. But we had a second chance. At least if we didn't cry before, so cry after. Cry after. We're going into Galut. Can you imagine all the Jews? Chains, horrible, chains all over. Elderly men, elderly women, little children, little children marching. First grade, third grade, fifth grade, marching out in the Galut. Yermio Navi comes. He wants to join them. He goes, he takes the chains from an older man. He puts it on him. The Buzaradan said, no, you are not allowed to come together. Special, special command. You may not join in. They could have cried. At that time, they didn't. So, very interesting. It says after that, Ein menachem. Nobody regretted it. Nobody felt bad. Nobody started to think, you know what, I shouldn't have treated them like that. No, I shouldn't have been like that. They just didn't, they forgot about it. Finally, all the friends, all the friends that we had, they rebelled against us. Who were the friends? The Malachim. The Malachim all confused their occupations. The Malach of Esh, the Malach of Fire be- went and did the Malach of Water. The Malach of Water became the Malach of Esh. They all mixed up. So when Kla Yisrael tried to call down the Malachim to help them, they didn't. Why? Because we did not do Teshuvah. Koreyeho Bogduva. So we now, coming towards the end of Tisha B'Av, we sit together in such an assemblage, in such a kinus. 
It's a pe'er, pe'er hador is right here, the splendor and the glory of the nation. We want to bring Mashiach. We know that Mashiach Tzidkenu is supposed to be born on Tisha B'Av. Mashiach Tzidkenu, born on Tisha B'Av. And we know also that it's a Moed. We don't say Tachanun. Other things we don't say. Who's going to bring Mashiach? I just want to give you one little insight to leave. After the great Gaon, Rabbi Aaron Kotler, Zecher Tzadik Livrocha, the Rosh Hashiva of Lakewood, after he died. So some of the students of the yeshiva said, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows the future? Maybe the whole yeshiva is going to close. Maybe there'll be no Lakewood. Maybe there's no future for us, for the Torah in America. And they got very upset because who was going to be the leader of the generation? So they had a great mashkiach, Rabbi Nosson Wachtvogel, Zechet Tzadik Livracha. And Rabbi Nosson Wachtvogel told them about a dream that Rav Shif had in the dream. Elio Navi was sleeping in the bed. Elio Navi. And Chatam Sofer came and tried to wake up Elio Navi. Let's go, we need Mashiach. He tried to wake him up. Chatam Sofer was not successful. Chatam Sofer left the room. After that, none other than Rav Aaron, the great Rosh Hashiva came in, walked over to Elio Navi and tried to wake him up. He couldn't wake him up. After he left, some yeshiva bachurim came in, some yeshiva students. They tried to wake him up, and immediately Elio Navi woke up. Who's going to bring yeshiva? Who's going to bring Mashiach? Who is going to bring the yeshiva for our generation? That guy. And that guy, and that girl, and that girl, they got the koach to bring Mashiach Tzidkenu. Let us all do teshuva, teshuva shlema. It's a time for it right now. Let us already end with all the tishabav. Torah anytime in Chazak is going to do a special on Mashiach Tzidkenu and uh, all the things that we'll have to know about Karbonot and everything. It's going to be a full day, maybe a full week. But who's going to bring Mashiach? It's everybody sitting here. It's the young children, the young boys and girls. Bezrat Hashem. May we see the Gula Shlema Bimheira Amen. Amen.